What's going on, everybody? Thank you, thank you. Hope everyone enjoyed lunch. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to take a second, thank Patrick, Isaac, who's not here, and honestly, the entire Adventure team. Been with AMG for a couple months, and honestly cannot ask for a better place to work and put on an amazing event. Thank you to everyone involved. So I wanted to discuss today the principles of persuasion and really how they apply in the marketing ecosystem today. This is based heavily, as Jalen mentioned, on Cialdini's um, principles. I, a couple months ago, was listening to a Freakonomics podcast, and Cialdini was the guest, and they were just going into the principles, and he was going into detail on each and every one, and I was just fascinated, to say the least, at how these were used on me and probably everyone in this room, essentially every day, and it's, these can be very, very effective tools if we use them correctly. So I wanted to start off with, I mean, the first one is reciprocity. As human beings, we feel the need when someone does us a service or helps us with anything, buys us dinner, gives you a ride somewhere, it's, I, could, I guess, a subtle feeling that we need to help them, like we need to repay that favor in some way. And this is used very often, just a little warning, car salesmen are gonna be examples most of the time here. But when you walk into a dealership, one of the first things they ask you is if you want water, a snack, or to sit, and obviously they want you to be comfortable, they want you to have a positive experience, but also the, feel, the need, feeling the need to reciprocate isn't gonna take someone from not wanting to buy a car to buying a car, obviously. But that could make you feel more comfortable with that salesman and maybe make you want to work with him over someone else. We go to commitment and consistency. As human beings, we like to stick with our word. We don't like to go back even, I mean, I'm sure everyone here has had a disagreement or a conversation with someone and you know you're right. You give all the proof possible. You show that you're right. The person's still gonna fight most of the time. It's, people don't like to go back and admit they're wrong. If you ever give to a charity organization, whether it's online or however you do it, you'll get an email or a call six months, a year later, whatever it is, and they're gonna ask you if you wanna match your donation. The wording is key, they don't ask you if you wanna give a donation, they ask you if you wanna match a don your previous donation. They wanna remind you that you donated and you should stick with what you previously did. And then we move on to social proof. People like to fit in, we don't wanna stick out, we don't wanna be the sore thumb. If you start at a new company and you walk in on the first day at 9 a.m., you see everyone's there at their desks and they look like they've been there for an hour. The next day you're likely to come in at 8.45 or even 8.30, you don't wanna be that one that sticks out. And similarly, if you, come in and no one's there at eight, nine o'clock, you're very likely gonna come in late the next day. When you're building a website, this is why reviews are so important. You're showing the potential customer for whatever it is, whatever your service you're offering, if it's a product, you're showing them other people have used this product. It's tested, they like it. Obviously, if you have bad reviews, you don't wanna show that. But if you did well, you wanna show people that you're not the only one here. Other people have done it and other people loved it the service or this product. And then authority is the next one. It's very important to differentiate here. We wanna be an authority. We don't wanna be in authority. If you're coming to someone and you're telling them what to do, it's never gonna work. It's almost never gonna work. People don't like to be bossed around. When you're coming in as an authority, as an expert in that field, whatever the field is, it gives you a good look. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up my Lakers or Kobe Bryant in any way here. Nike will always, or any shoe brand, or any brand is gonna to try to find people that are at the, top of the at the top of that field, whatever it is. So when you're watching a commercial, you're looking online and you see Kobe Bryant wearing Nikes or LeBron or whoever it may be, if it works for the best player in the world, it obviously would work for me. And that's one of the reasons that they make signature shoes. You can walk around and say like, I'm wearing Kobe's shoes. These are probably gonna make me a better player, which they probably won't, but they make you feel that way. Gatorade had a huge campaign in the 90s based around Michael Jordan, who was the biggest, the best athlete in the world, the best basketball player, be like Mike. If you drink this sports drink, you're gonna be like the best athlete. You have the chance to be like Mike. Then there's liking. People are likely to be persuaded and wanna work with people that they like. If someone's just rude to you, you're not gonna to wanna to deal with them, you're not gonna to wanna to do anything with them. And we like people that compliment us. Going back to car dealerships, you walk in, whatever, you could be wearing the ugliest outfit in the world, you're gonna get a compliment on your shoes, on your jacket, on your hat, whatever you're wearing, you're very likely to get complimented because they want you to like them. They want you to feel the need to wanna to work with them. If you're making a website, this is part of why an About Us page is so important. 
You're showing them you're humanizing yourself. We're not just a website. We're not just whatever. You're, we're not just, I mean, we're not just an advertising group. There's human beings behind us. We're people as you guys got to see today. And that's more likely to get someone to want to work with you. And then we move on to scarcity. People want what they can't have. If you have a product that looks rare and it's, I mean, no one has it, it just seems more appealing. I can't count the amount of times that I've gone to my gym and I've seen the sign that says special promo, $20 a month, deal ends today. And just for the heck of it, I went in the next day. And they said the deal still stood and they have no issue. And it's commonly used, someone made the joke to me once, Macy's has a one day only sale seven days a week. They want you to see that this is not gonna last a while. And then once you get that, once you acquire that product, whatever it may be, you feel like a winner. I got, this is rare, no one else has this and I got it. Then unity, people want to feel, people are likely to want to be with someone and deal with someone and work with someone that they feel like they're, I guess, family or they're one with them. Back to the car dealerships, I walked in a little bit ago, I was looking for a new car and I came wearing a Laker hoodie. The guy jumped and said, oh, how much he loved the Lakers, how much he loves LeBron, and I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but the guy told me he was born and raised in Staten Island, he probably hated LeBron, probably, I mean, if I was wearing a Bulls hoodie, he probably would have said he loved Jordan. And it's just that aspect of becoming one. And then he found a way to say, we have a big game tonight. We, that word is so important, rather than saying, you guys have a game, we makes you feel like you're one, and you're much more likely to want to work with that person. Now, a little bit ago, Google came out with this diagram. They came out with this new marketing funnel that essentially what it said is that, it's, they called it, first of all, they called it the messy middle, as it's titled over there. It says that the user journey is nonlinear and it's pretty tough to follow. Me personally, I don't know about you guys, I very rarely thought of a product that I wanted or thought of a product that I needed. Googled it, found the one I liked, and bought it. It's never been that simple. I need to look it up. I need to look through every single option. Once I find the option I like, I need to find the best price. Then find a promo code, and then not even buy it. And then do that process seven times till eventually I buy it. This is exactly what's shown over here, is that you go from exploration around to evaluation, and then you think you're done, but you do it all over again. This gives us as marketers the opportunity to make multiple impacts on the client, on the potential client. They saw your product once and you captured their attention. Our goal is to keep their attention through that entire process. Someone worded this perfectly when I was discussing this with them a while ago. Our goal as marketers is to bridge, it's to build a bridge over that messy middle. Now these principles could come in handy big time. Now they're not gonna be, it's not some magic spell that's gonna go and you put, you make the product seem scarce and all of a sudden your conversions are gonna triple or double or even go up 50%. That's not how it works. But if you find ways for whatever you're doing, it doesn't even need to be with marketing to implement it. If you're meeting with a client to show that we're one, it's a very subtle thing and that's not gonna take them from being completely uninterested into now wanting it, but it's gonna push you in that right direction. And, <clears throat> excuse me, this is all a factor of just the endless options on the internet today. And it makes it difficult for someone to pick a specific product. But making it seem scarce when need be and not forcing it, it's very important, you can't just, people aren't stupid, people are gonna see if a product, if it just doesn't seem legit, if it doesn't seem authentic. So if there's a way, if we can implement these, it could really make a strong impact. And like you see over here, there's the line branching out of evaluation towards the purchase, and that's experience. When you get that person to convert, However, maybe you got them on, not only are they likely to repeat as a customer, if you bought a pair of Nikes and you liked it, then you need another pair of shoes, you're probably gonna go to Nike again because you had a good experience. There's word of mouth and they tell their friends, I got these Nikes and I love them. And it kind of gets rid of this whole messy middle. So it could have very long lasting effects. Again, like I mentioned a couple of times, these principles can really make a big difference overall and make this messy middle just a little bit less messy.